Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about spinning. And is it possible for something to be spun one way, stop, and then reverse and spin the other way? Okay, so if you've ever played with two sphere magnets before, a curious thing happens. But what happens when you spin two balls like this stuck together? Well, let's see. So this is a little weird. I just barely spun these and they haven't stopped yet. It's like something's powering it. So if we slow this down, you can see what's happening here. For some reason when I spin it, one of the balls lifts in the air. That's kind of an odd thing to happen because what that means is that the center of mass that used to be down here now moved to the top. So, so when you spun it, it lifted the center of mass up from the bottom. So it gained potential energy from you spinning it. So for some odd reason, when you spin two balls together, one of them goes up in the air and then it slowly starts to fall down. And if you've ever spun a hard boiled egg before, that's the same reason why it spins up on its end. Let's take a look. So watch what happens when you spin a hard boiled egg. It immediately jumps up and starts spinning on its end. Watch again. Look how stable it gets and it just stays up on its end like that. Very similar to what's happening to these balls here. So what is going on here? Why can a hard boiled egg stand up on its end when it gets spun around like this? And why do two spheres do the same thing and spin for a long time? So let's see what happens if I try to make an egg stand up on its end by spinning it, if I spin it on ice. Okay, so I have here a pan of ice. Let's see if I can get the egg to stand up on its end by spinning it when it's on this slippery surface. So it's not able to quite get up on its end like it could on the table. See on a table, it easily stands up on its end. So the reason why this is happening has to do with something called gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopic precession means that when a gyroscope is spinning, so when there's a spinning wheel that starts to fall, it doesn't just fall over. Rather, it starts to fall, but that falling turns into spinning. And it spins more and more and more as it starts to fall. So you'll notice that it doesn't just fall over even though it's off balance. So gravity is pulling it down, but that gravity potential energy starts to turn into torque. And the torque starts to turn the gyroscope around in a circle like that. And that's actually exactly what's happening with the egg. But instead of gravity causing torque on the egg, it's actually a different force. It's the friction on the table. So when you spin the egg, there's some friction on the table that's opposing the force. And since the egg is spinning, it causes an angular momentum in this direction. So it pushes the egg up like this. And that's why when we spin it on ice, we don't see the egg pop up on its end because there's no force causing a torque to push the egg up. So the friction on the table is what causes the egg to pop up on its end and the balls to pop up in the air like that. And then once they're there, now they're kind of similar to a gyroscope such that when they start to fall over, since they're spinning, they have gyroscopic precession, which means they start to turn in a circle. And so when the ball or the egg start to fall over, the gyroscopic precession causes it to spin in a circle like this, and that gives it an even longer time spinning than it would have had otherwise. So using the same physics of spinning that I explained earlier, you can get some odd behaviors to happen. One of the reactions is made famous in a toy called a rattleback. And I made my own homemade rattleback here. So what this is is just a spoon that I cut the head off and then I put some sticky tack here in three different spots. And if you want to try this at home, you have to put it very similar to what I've done here. And so what I've done here is I've offset the center of gravity. And when you do that, something odd happens when you spin this. Okay, so watch what happens when I spin it. So I'm going to spin it this way. It's going to turn around and then it goes the other direction. 
Now that is crazy if you don't realize what just happened. So I'm giving it angular momentum in this direction. I'm spinning it this way. But what it ends up doing is spinning the opposite way. Let's see it again. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> So with my homemade rattle back here on ice, you'll see that the same thing doesn't happen. It just stops spinning. So if there's no friction, it doesn't reverse direction. So what's happening with the rattle back can actually be explained in a little simpler setup here. Basically, any object weighted on one side will tend to fall to that side when it's allowed to fall. So if I have a curved strip here, and I have some offset weights on it. If I rock it back and forth, it will spin in this direction. See how it's turning about this direction here? So when this strip rocks back and forth, it always falls to the heavy side. And that's what's going on with the rattle back here. As it rocks back and forth, it always falls to the heavy side. So even if the direction you began spinning it was in the opposite direction, once it slowly comes to stop, if it's still rocking and it has friction, the static friction will cause it to spin the opposite direction. But there has to be some static friction for the torque to happen, or else one side can't stay planted while the other side swings. That's why it doesn't work on ice. So if you weren't able to quite wrap your head around the physics in this video, go check out brilliant.org. So brilliant.org is a cool problem solving website that teaches you how to think like a scientist and a physicist. So you can dive in and solve easy to challenging problems in their guided sequences on their website. So to support the Action Lab, go to brilliant.org slash the Action Lab to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, the first 200 people that click the link in my description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And you can leave me any comments or questions in the comments section. You can even leave me any suggestions there and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.